what's good guys? It's Andrew with The Soul Broker here. I'm here with one of our good clients, Ed Lanuza. Uh, his Instagram name is at E-D-D-L-A-N-U-Z-A. Go follow him on Instagram. So today's video, we're gonna be uh, discussing uh, legitimacy, uh, how to check sneakers, and stuff like that. So Ed has prepared some questions for us and we're gonna have a conversation. So let's get started. Sure, so here's my first question for you. Um, the steps you make to legit check the shoes, like, how do you do it? Like, All right, so uh, as you can see here, I have a few boxes here. I'm um, gonna go through uh, some ways that we uh, legit check shoes. So the first box here is an Air Jordan box. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is an Aris Jordan 1. As you can see on the top right corner of the box, there is a little sticker. Okay, um, most of these stores that you find in the mall, like Foot Locker, Champs, Foot Action, retailers. Foot Locker, Retailers, they'll have this sticker on here. Now this doesn't mean that the shoe is authentic because somebody could just take a real box and look at the shoe. Um, hold on, let me shut that door because that's annoying. <laughs> So, doesn't mean that the uh, stickers there means that the shoe is authentic, so obviously you're gonna wanna do your due diligence, but mm -hmm. we'll first start with the box, because mm -hmm. a lot of times, these fake factories absolutely butcher the box, so let's start that with the box. Away. Yes, and anytime you see one red flag, then that's a clear that's indica it. indication that the shoe is fake. The next step is to look on the inside of the box. Now, on the inside of the box, you have a stamp. Uh, it could be either red or blue. Mm -hmm. Um, also, you will see that this shoe has a YDM sticker. Now, a lot of the fake factories, they're like keen on this, they already know about this. Mm -hmm. um, like also original packaging, like maybe a little sticker. Yeah, that one, yeah. um, so that would be like the box, like what you want to check for with the box. Also on the underside, they'll have a sticker. The on the sticker. underside of the box, a Nike Air sticker. Now when you get to the shoe, you want to look at certain things like the build of the shoe, the quality on the shoe. Um, this particular shoe, um, the, the material on it, it, it feels like it has a certain feel. So mm -hmm. when you legit check a shoe, you want to use your sight, your smell, your touch, like kind of like all the five senses aside from tasting the shoe. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the next thing we're gonna look at is uh, after you look at the build of the shoe, the stitching of the shoe, um, the smell of the shoe, because mm -hmm. certain shoes have a certain smell to them. Uh, I could tell you right now- talking about dead stops, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, you might smell some foot fungus if you have a year <laughs> shoe, but a dead stock Jordan 1, you may smell um, it kind of smells like gasoline, I would say. Um, it's just the glue smell, but... Um, Funky smell. Yeah, it has a distinct smell to it. it so The infrared um, 6 does. Like, it smells like gasoline. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. But if you don't have, like, let's say the shoe is pre-owned and you're not sure, you could look at something like the size tag. So mm -hmm. uh, a good reference point is GOAT listings, used <laughs> listings on GOAT. So you pull up a used GOAT go listing, you want to check if there's any variation in the look of the shoe or the way that the size tag looks. Mm -hmm. um, you'll also see on the size tag that it has uh, the SKU number. So mm -hmm. you could look up the SKU number and see if it matches the shoe. Sure. A lot of these fake factories are just downright lazy and it's very Put sloppy. It Put it um, so you want to check the size tag, you want to look at the build of the shoe, the stitching. Mm -hmm. Now let me say this, when, when these fake factories make the shoes, they always mess up something. Like they're very careless in the way that they do stuff. That's not to say there aren't really good fakes, which we'll get into later, but um, you know, uh, you should be able to tell right away uh, if a shoe is real or fake. Uh, so that was a Jordan. Okay, uh, another thing you want to look for is like widow's peaks, but that's mm -hmm. not to say all Jordans that have widow's peaks are fakes. Like mm -hmm. we were talking before that like 85 OG Jordans um, have yeah, widow's peaks. Yeah, like this, like uh, yeah, when like 82, these new uh, high cut patent leather Jordans have widow peaks on the mm -hmm. side, the toe, and then the medial side of the shoe, they all have widow's peaks. Now if you don't know what a widow's peak is, it's kind of like that nub or notch. It looks like a, a raised triangle. Um, Jordan 11, glad I picked this up because 
Uh, the ball of the Jordan, the jump man, should yeah. line up with the two and the three of the shoe. Yeah, they fake a lot of this um, stuff. Yeah. I'm also uh, going to say uh, you want to check the shoes with a black light because if you run the the shoe under a black light, if I go forward, somewhere in the drawer. If you run the shoe under a black light, you could notice I don't know if it picks that up, but you will notice that the stitching is illuminated. Yeah. So I'm glad I brought the black light here because now we're going to go into Yeezys. Uh, I have one here. So every Yeezy that comes here in our shop, the first thing we'll do, it's all right. The first thing we'll do is run the label under a black light. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the fake factories, I don't know, especially on these really good fakes, like, why would you make a, a near-perfect fake and then stamp the label? Like, that it's fake. Like, are these guys stupid or what? Like, I don't understand. Like, like make a perfect fake shoe and then just, like, stamp the label and say, hey, guys, this is a fake pair. Like, if you didn't do that, maybe you'd pass them off. But I don't know. Maybe because of the... Uh they the Yeezy might sue them. So, I oh, I put a perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. I mean, so the first thing you want to check out for this shoe is um, the little man in the box. Mm -hmm. So aside from like a bre a bread V two, this little man in this black box, it's right right above the uh, size the size of the shoe. It should be very distinct and outlined. It shouldn't be blurry. Um, also, uh, another thing is, you can see on this pair that it has this small box that you also saw on the Jordan box. Um, this will, very similar to that, a lot of the retailers will put this, uh, this sticker on, um, maybe as a way to keep inventory or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you usually see this, but that's not to say if like a Yeezy like this doesn't have it, that means it's fake. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to get into is the actual shoe. So here's a cream white Yeezy V2. On the inside of the shoe, okay, you have the size tag. Now the size tag right below the size, it'll say APE, CLU, mm -hmm. etc. Now what is that? That is the factory that the shoe was made in. So also on the inside of the box, you will have the same sticker. Right here, um, you could see here, it says Ape 95 Final. Mm -hmm. Okay, not to say that if a shoe doesn't have that, it's fake. Mm -hmm. But these are the one of the things that you look for. Right. Um, it's a follow-up question about these. Sure. This tags right here, does it matter or not? I mean, uh, to answer your question, a lot of the older V1s had just this tag, um, not this tag, but a lot of the newer ones have both tags. Mm -hmm. um, so does it matter? Yes, based off of when they were released. They were released also, we were talking about smell. smell. So the smell of the Yeezy, I really can't explain it, but when you went through so many real pairs, you will know if the shoe is real or fake based mm -hmm. off of the smell. Um, also, uh, the feel, like on the inside of the shoe, like there's there's suede, suede thing, like yeah. like little patches of leather with suede on mm -hmm. them. Um, a lot of the fakes, they just can't get the suede right. Okay. There's a very distinct nap on the suede. Mm -hmm. When you run your finger against it, you could almost feel it. Um, another thing is, um, Another thing is the actual, the actual paper these shoes come in, you could clearly see that one side of the paper is almost like a waxy, uh -huh. glossy, and then the inside is more of like a plain matte color. Okay. So you can actually feel that, like yep. you could feel that the one side is like kind of waxy, the, the, the glossy type, glossy. Like you know, and then the inside is more matte, mm -hmm. so that is another way. Um, like I said before, when you're dealing with a fake shoe, they always make one mistake. There's always one mistake. Another thing is the boost. When you press it, it should feel firm and then also supple uh, as well. Like you, you, you really. 
it's very hard to describe, but when you've gone through so many pairs, you could tell, you could tell whether yeah. the shoe is real or fake. And then also the build of the shoe, mm -hmm. um, like where you would put your foot in, like it, it almost has a certain look to it, mm -hmm. like uh, very like tapered in the front, and then the back is a little bit more wide. Um, but that would be uh, a way to tell. Also, what I would do is, I would also check on GOAT mm -hmm. um, and cross-reference all your pairs yeah, yeah. against pairs that are on GOAT and also have a black light handy mm -hmm. and just run the label against the black light. Um, I'm gonna be shooting a separate part to this video where I will show you the little details mm -hmm. because we weren't able to focus things. Yeah. It's just like a set frame. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanna answer the rest of the questions as of right now. Um, if uh, we could continue. So since we've got into the details on how you do things, how you legit check the Yeezys, Jordans, and all this stuff. So how do you approach a customer that sells you fakes? Okay. Um, Unknowingly or sometimes, you know. I mean, knowingly. It's, you, so the backbone of any business is customer service. So you always want to be respectful mm -hmm. to your customer base. Um, even if they're, knowingly or unknowingly no, selling a fake product. Now, I've seen a lot of stores, like uh, Round 2, for example, and I understand why they do this. If something is fake, they'll just say they'll pass on the item. But if the customer insists, they'll tell them later that the item is fake. Yeah. Um, sometimes people get upset when they spend their hard-earned money on something and then you're the bearer of bad news. Yeah. So I could identify with it, but I, I like the more straightforward approach. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just tell the customer that the item is not authentic, mm -hmm. and then I'll go into details and well, kind of yeah. substantiate my claim. Mm -hmm. You don't want to tell somebody their item is fake and then yeah, not explain yeah, it, yeah. or just half-ass explain it. Mm -hmm. You just look like an idiot then and not informed. Yep. So um, to answer your question, uh, we're very straight up about it. We'll tell the consumer that their product is not authentic. Mm -hmm. We'll substantiate our claim by all of the aforementioned stuff we explained. Yeah. And uh, we'll take it that way. But um, there's so many different ways of doing it. You could just pass on the item. But a lot of people, when you pass, they don't know why. Mm -hmm. True. You True. know? So yeah. I'd rather be upfront with people so they know exactly why we pass on the mm -hmm. item. And also, I really believe it's very trite and... Um, you know, uh, how do I say it? It's just very cliche and trite to say each one teach one, but yeah. the part of the secret culture that I identify with is educating consumers, mm -hmm. and and that's what I like to do a lot, is yeah. like as consumers come in here and they bought a fake shoe, I'll tell them the steps that they need to take next time to prevent that or mitigate that risk, because owning a secondhand store, you always have the risk of buying Buy fake product so um, you know I don't want to hear it anyone that has a secondhand store or has bought sold trade uh, any sneakers or clothing you've bought fake products if you're not gonna if you're gonna tell people that you haven't bought a fake you're a liar yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't want to hear it That's like true. easy Busta got on um, on, uh, that show. on you've seen it yeah, where he was like that. oh yeah. is these shoes real and he's like yeah they're real and meanwhile they're not it's real like, yeah so i mean it's like what this is fake and he's claiming that he got it like a hundred percent it doesn't miss exactly so don't believe anyone when they say oh i have a hundred percent guarantee because everyone makes mistakes we're all human at the end of the day mm -hmm. but the real part of whether you're a legitimate business person or not is if you make a mistake owning up to it mm -hmm. and doing the right thing by your customer. It's like what Yeezy Buster did. So, you know, that is what we do as far as that's concerned. Um, but it's not easy by any means because when you think about it, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, 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 I, it's, I'm almost having difficulty finding the words to say because, you know, everyone wants to have a guarantee oh, yeah, yeah, that anything I'm buying is 100%. I can never guarantee somebody that, mm -hmm. but what, what I can do is, I have a policy, no refunds, all sales are final, but let's say somebody buys something from me and they say, oh, well, this isn't authentic, and they bring it in. If it's the same way that I got it, I'll do the right thing and give them a refund, but if you're hitting me up six months later and the shoe was like used, like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. like, I can't course. do anything for you. Yeah. But you have to understand, 
that some people they they have ulterior motives and they're looking to get over like how do I know if I sold somebody an authentic shoe and then they have a fake pair at home and then they keep the box that they, they, they give me back the same box and then give me the fake the shoe, fake shoe yes. like that where where it comes into like why we have a policy no refunds while sales are final because then if you don't do your due diligence in checking the shoe what if they give you a fake pair and you don't find it like then you're screwed so I mean it's not easy we do our best to make sure you know we do our due diligence for every single pair but things do happen but with that said if things happen and a customer you know gets a fake pair we will make sure we'll give them a full refund and do the right thing right. yeah so with that said like, do you have any any experience like holding a, a UE pair yes. which is called the, the the good face yes. out there like how yeah. do you like you know compare it to the real ones like just a, a summary okay so one of the best fakes I've ever seen was probably like a cream white V2 mm -hmm. and it was literally spot on like spot on the only thing and as I said before in the video the only thing is that tag right here was completely off mm -hmm. everything else was perfect the little man was defined. Mm -hmm. It had the sticker inside of the box that matched the, matched the production on the label. Everything, everything checked out. So my advice to the viewers that are watching is if there is one red flag, you pass on the shoe. On the shoe. No matter what. Because a lot of people, they're like, oh my God, I'm getting such an amazing deal. Like I have to buy this shoe. That's how people lure you in. Like, if something is too good to be true, it usually is. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting an off-white Chicago 1 for $700, you're getting scammed. True. I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so that's not to say there's not good deals out there. Yeah. Yeah. You have to check. You have to, because nowadays, you have to understand, when these shoes are made overseas. You don't mm -hmm. think that an employee that worked for Kanye or Adidas at one point said, you know, fuck Adidas, fuck Kanye. I'm gonna go and make my own fake shoe. They, yeah. like, this happens. It does. It um, does. It's just something I thought was interesting to talk about because as sneakerheads, like, everyone is so concerned about whether the item is real or not, you know? Um, and I mean, honestly, as a collector myself, like, that's something that you, like, worry about. Like, when you get a brand new shoe, you're like, the first thing you do is like make sure you legit check it. Like yeah. I've done that so many times because nobody wants to wear fake stuff. Like yeah. you don't want to be the person walking around at a sneaker con and somebody go, "What are those?" Oh, that's fake. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't want to be that guy. Like <laughs> shrink into a, like small kind of yeah circle. Especially if we all work hard to, to buy the shoes. Like yeah. no one wants to get a fake product. So I totally understand. Um, How about can you can you like classify to like explain to us to the viewers like the B grades? B grades. All right. So B grades are not necessarily fake shoes. Mm -hmm. B grades are like factory second. So if you ever see on a shoe that um, it either has a stamp under under the box lid that is marked as B grade mm -hmm. second hand, or the stamp on the um, the inside of the shoe on the tag, that's how you know it's a B grade, but that doesn't mean it's fake. It's fake. Talking about B grades. All right, so B grades don't mean that they're fake. So a B grade means like it's a factory second. So when factories have a production line, they have a factory standard. Mm -hmm. So, um, sorry Jordan Brand, but your Trap 4s are terrible with all the glue on them. Uh, I don't think there were any B grades of those. There should have been. So uh, they wouldn't sell Travis. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, if you see like glue stains yeah. on it, or maybe a stitch that was misplaced, mm -hmm. or um, some sort of factory flaw, like an aberration or something uh, to that effect, then the product will be marked as a B grade. It will probably be sold in like pennies on the dollar to yeah. a wholesaler. Yeah. I mean, that's why you've probably seen like I, I like a fragment or something like that. Maybe those fragment ones that went up in Marshalls were B grades. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I've gotten black toe Jordan ones that were B grades that looked perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Like speaking of B grades, um, I'm not gonna divulge any names, but I had a band one and was told mm -hmm. my band one was fake 
because it was a B grade. Now, we're talking about the band one, not the new band one, the band one with the X in the back, yeah, yeah. the Jordan one high band, OG. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody actually told me that that shoe was fake because it had X's in the back. Uh, I mean, not because it had X's in the back, because yeah, it had a B grade on, um, on, the tag. on the tag and also onto the box lid. So somebody's like, oh, these are B grades, these are fake. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's a good question you asked, and yeah. I'm happy you asked it because yeah. it wasn't on the original question. There's, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a thin line between B grades and and, and fakes, yeah. and fakes are aren't imperfect too. You know, they aren't perfect. I mean, and those are B grades as well. They aren't perfect, but they're legit. You know what I mean? Well, so I don't want you to confuse the people because yeah, uh, there's a misconception. But there's a big misconception that B grades it's are fake. are yeah. fake. But yeah. B grades are not fake. B they're grades not, not. are just factory seconds yep. that didn't make the cut. So they have certain standards as far as production is concerned. So when those standards are not upheld, then that shoe is considered a B mm -hmm. grade. Was this outlet like upstate? I don't know. Do you know where that the, uh, where outlet comes? that where was the outlet that had the band ones? There was a lot of it was a, a lot of yeah outlets. the band ones yeah they do I I heard that I they do have know. a lot of outlets it hit the outlets but I was saying about the uh, you know the luxury brands the Gucci's the oh, Balenciagas the Woodbury Commons yeah yeah they yeah, do yeah, have yeah. B grades out there yeah the I didn't know that they had B grade luxury products they do it, and it surprised me that when you when you go out there. They do have B grades. Is, is there a difference, like a big difference in price? Like if a, if a shoe's like Not really. $6.95, I mean, like you're getting them for like 200 bucks? No, no, you're getting it for like top dollar still. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> they're made in China and, and you're still paying top dollar. Well, I feel like uh, from from my perspective, like I feel like everything that's in, in the outlets, probably a B grade. Sure. Or, or return. Perhaps, Could be. yeah. Because I returned some shoe in, in the now. Yeah, yeah. So probably they could sell it there or maybe put it back to the retailers or online. I don't know. But there's just a perspective on me that when you go to an outlet, pretty much you're going to get a B grade. But in my opinion, there's also a misconception that if, let's say you have two DS shoes, like you have a DS Black Toe 1 mm -hmm. that is not a B grade, and then you have a DS Black Toe 1 that is a B grade. B -grade. Yeah. There's certain B grades where I'm like, why is this a B grade? I can't even tell yeah. why it's a B grade. So, should there be a difference in price because something's a B grade? In my opinion, no. Sure. Like, if it's a shoe like a Jordan 1, you're getting the high for a Jordan 1. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you could tell why it's a B grade and, like, clearly say, like, all right, oh, well, that's why, yeah. they maybe you should discount grade. the price, but in my opinion, like, the pricing should probably be the same. Mm -hmm. Um, so we had some other questions about uh, some other stuff, so we could get into that. Sure. So um, there's this video going around YouTube, like StockX are selling fakes. Sure. So what are your thoughts on that? Like, it's right. just a thought. Sure. So here are my thoughts on that. Um, I remember when StockX first came about um, quite some years ago, uh, relatively recently. Like, it hasn't been like so long ago. I want to say it was like um, maybe like 2015 or 2016 because I had a I remember selling my first pair on stock which was like a Yeezy 2 Red October. Mm. Um, I personally feel inherently when you do any secondhand business or just in the sneaker market in general, you're bound to get fake. So it's not their fault yeah. if that is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's claimed that it's happened. It's not their fault because if you think about it. Supply and demand. You have to understand what drives the hype behind the product is that supply and demand. You don't think Nike supply. exactly. You don't think Nike when they release a, a Travis Jordan one or a Union Jordan one. Do you not think that um, they know and that there's going to be there's going to be more demand? Like, how does it look when you line up? Uh, when, when you're outside of 21 Mercer and there's a fucking line that's three blocks down, like that is hype right there. Yes. You know why there's a block that's you know a, a line that there's three three blocks down? It's because there's only X amount of pairs of that shoe. Mm -hmm. They know it's a limited shoe. Mm -hmm. Like now, look at Yeezys for example. There's so many pairs. There's really no demand for them. 
And they're literally st- sitting in the Staten Island Mall. Yeah. So going back to what I was saying, um, inherently when you have shoes that are hype, okay, they're going to be fakes. Because mm-hmm. the fake factories, they want to make up for that demand. There's still a crazy demand. There is, there is. You know, so a lot of these factories, they can do a good job. Some of them do, like as we were discussing mm-hmm. before, with certain UA pairs, they make such good, good yeah. fakes really that good you cannot tell. And then also, I want to get into this. I feel like they've scaled so much that perhaps, and I'm saying perhaps, not that this is how it is, mm-hmm. perhaps the people that are coming on, they're not like trained well enough mm-hmm. or onboarded the correct way, uh, or perhaps maybe it's, what they're getting paid like like for example like if you've worked at like riff la or or flight club or stadium goods you're not going to work for you know 15 dollars an hour 20 dollars an hour mm-hmm. like i've seen reviews on glass door about the company that kind of go into like the quotas that they have to legit check shoes mm-hmm. and like the way that they legit check shoes so you know that could be an issue as well like when you scale so big Sometimes companies cannot keep up with yeah. the scaling. Like mm-hmm. they've grown so quick that you know they're getting thousands of orders every day. They yeah. need to keep up with that volume. Mm-hmm. So inherently with business too, like you know, are they hiring enough staff to legit check, check these shoes? Day. Like maybe they have so so much of a quota that some fakes are passing through on accident. Because they're not doing their due diligence. They can't spend the same time on each pair to check each pair. So these are all possibilities. I'm not saying that that is the case. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel personally, you run the risk of getting a fake if you're not buying it directly from from the retailer. That's it. That's it. So um, those are my thoughts about it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know... There's been there's been times where I, I've seen Flight Club get fakes before. You know, like, no one has gone unscathed. That's what I want to say. I've said in the beginning of the video, if you're going to sit here and say that you've never bought a fake pair of shoes, I don't want to hear it. You're definitely lying. Everyone that has been in the sneaker game has gotten a fake pair of shoes. Yeah. So, you know... Um, unless they always buy retail. Unless they always buy retail. Yeah. You know, so, I mean... It's good because when you buy retail, you know who you're getting it from. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you bought it secondhand, anything could have happened. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, that's that's my thoughts on that. Um, do you have any other questions or that was pretty much it? That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to do um, some close-up shots of, like, what to look for in the shoes mm-hmm. um, and uh, do some B-roll and stuff like that. So... Uh, definitely subscribe uh, to my channel, like, comment, uh, ask us any questions. Uh, we'll definitely be able to answer. Definitely follow Ed at E-D-D-L-A-N-U-Z-A on Instagram. And then also follow me uh, at The Soul Broker. So we're located at 2110 Richmond Road. Suite J is in James, Staten Island, New York, 10306. We're open Monday through Saturday from 12 to 8 and Sunday from 12 to 6. We do buy, sell, trade, consignment. Um, definitely check us out. We have a really good selection here. We'll definitely do a video about that. But um, appreciate you guys. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Appreciate you. Educational video. Yes. So, so as you could see on this Yeezy box, the top left where it says Yeezy Boost, you could see that small man. You could see that this is very defined. Okay. Um, uh, very defined, uh, looks a certain way. Uh, if you see that this little man in the box is blurry and it's not a bread V2 or something like that, it's probably fake. Um, also, you're going to want to take a black light, uh, and if I could find it, uh, you're going to want to take a black light like one I have here, and you're going to want to shine it against the label okay a lot of these fake factories they'll stamp the label this one is good okay another thing 
is, or you could see right under the size 13, it says APE. That is a factory in which it was produced. It will either say APE, CLU, something to that effect. Okay, now those three letters will also appear inside of the box. So another thing you could see here is they have the uh, production sticker here. Okay, it says APE 95 final. Okay, that will also match the inside size tag, it should say APE. Now that's not to say if this is not present that the pair is fit. So uh, we were discussing the paper on the uh, Yeezys. So one side should be very glossy, whereas the other side, one side should be glossy for this paper. And you could actually feel it by hand. Now the other side is a matte, it's a matte, okay, and it feels completely different. If you have any paper that does not look like this, or is it a brown color, like completely different in color, it's probably a fake. Um, also, uh, you're gonna wanna look at the build of the shoe, okay, the way that it's built. Okay, you could see that it has a distinct build to it. Okay, when they're brand new, you could see this. Um, the back is kind of like rounded and tapered and the front uh, also uh, very, very uh, distinct in the front. Okay, also I want you to focus in on this. Okay, you could tell um, the fake factories have a very hard time of replicating this nap on this suede here. It's very soft and it has a distinct nap to it. Also on the butters, the same thing on the uh, on the sesames rather. The sesames, they have a very uh, good suede. If the suede doesn't have a good nap to it, or it just feels not good, then it's probably a fake. Um, okay, uh, that was that. Uh, I also wanted to kind of get into the Jordans as well um, and discuss that. So a lot of people buy Yeezys for resale which is fine, but if you want to make more money, you want to diversify and get into other shoes. So this was the Harris, the Harris, the Harris, <laughs> Jordan 1. So you could tell on the top left of this box, uh, these retailers like Foot Locker, FTL for Foot Locker, um, they put this sticker here. Now that doesn't mean that the shoe is real because they could have put a fake in here but uh, you want to look for something like that. Also, on the inside of the box, you could tell here that we have a stamp, okay? It might be red or blue. Now, another thing you'll see is, I don't know if I could get that maybe, but there's a YDM sticker. Oh, this one, hold up. Okay. There's a YDM sticker here. Wait, wait. There you go. There's a YDM sticker here, okay? Um, but what we really want to do is take a look at the shoe. So the first thing I had said in the video is to really look at the way the shoe is made, okay? Stop focusing. Just, uh, oh, let's... Yep. There you go. I feel like it's even better. So the first thing we want to do is look at the way the shoe is made. Okay, uh, actually, you know what? Can you hold it and I'll sure. step on the camera? Because it'll be easy. All right, so the first thing you want to do is actually look at the way the shoe is made. So you could tell on this Jordan 1 that the material on this is very nice. Uh, it feels a certain way. It's uh, kind of like a velvet. Okay, and then if you look at the stitching on the shoe, uh, let me try and focus that. Um, like, look at the stitching on here. Let me take this off right here. So if you look at the stitching on this particular shoe, you could tell it's done very nicely. Um, okay, a lot of these fake factories, their quality is just terrible. So you want to look at the stitching. Um, also, if you could pick that up, look at the midsole. You could tell that these little indentations in the midsole, okay, um, a lot of them will get that incorrect. Also, you want to look at the size tag. So if you could maybe just hold that up really quick, and then we could get the whole size tag. All right, so 
What I like to do is compare the size tag. I'm going to try and focus in on that. So we have the size tag here. You could see the production date, okay, the size, the SKU number. What I like to do is compare this against pairs that are on GOAT. So definitely check that, okay. Um, a lot of the size tags you'll notice uh, inconsistencies in production date. Okay, certain pairs they have more than one production date due to restocks, but there shouldn't be too much of a variation. So if you check on GOAT, you may, may be able to find inconsistencies. And as I said, if there's any inconsistencies, it's a red flag, you should not buy the pair. All right, the other thing here is you could tell on this box that there is a sticker. A lot of times you won't see a sticker on a fake pair. Okay, the box will just be completely incorrect. Okay, um, but you can't always go by that. I'd rely more heavily off of the shoe and the build of the shoe, the smell of the shoe, the shape of the shoe, the size tag than the box. But these are th some things to consider. This is a Winlike 82 Jordan 11. As you could see um, on this particular shoe, you have something called a Widow's Peak, which we early early uh, early on in the video outlined, which what is Ed is pointing to now. Um, a lot of these new Jordan 11s will have the Widow's Peak, but on the older Jordan 11s, you will not see it on the low cut patent leather. Another thing I wanted to outline is the Jumpman and the Bull. Uh, as Ed is holding this, you could see that the Bull lines up with the two and the three. This is something you want to look for in a Jordan 11. Okay, also uh, the size tag on the shoe, which is found if you remove the shoe tree, um, that is something you want to reference against a goat pair. We're looking at the size tag on the shoe. So you could see the production date as well as a SKU number. Okay, you're going to want to cross reference this against a goat pair to make sure there's no inconsistencies. Okay, another thing is what I wanted to get into was the actual carbon fiber on the shoe. Um, as you could see, if you kind of run your nail against it, it has a certain uh, feel to it. Also, if you flick your finger against it, it should feel like real carbon fiber, not like a plastic. Um, so that's another thing to look for in a Jordan 11. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we can maybe do another video with different types of shoes, but I think we've pretty much covered everything. Um, definitely be safe when you're buying shoes, and if you have any questions, definitely let us know in the comments. Thank you.